Hey everybody, Roxbox90 here, back with a ban list update. As you guys are aware, uh, yesterday we had the ban list update from Wizards of the Coast themselves, which tends to be a cross-format legacy, modern, vintage, etc., etc. And today we got the Commander ban list update for, which is a more casual format. And while Wizards supports it, the community and uh, committee that makes these decisions made their decisions today. What was the decisions you might ask? Well, the first was that commander-specific mulligan rules have been removed. Effectively, they've decided that the Vancouver mulligan with the standard first one free in multiplayer and scry once you get six or lower is the best option. And so there are other different kinds of mulligans for trusted playgroups. So for example, you can keep you can mulligan sevens um, continuously until you have a proper hand, assuming you don't abuse it and your playgroup's cool with it, etc., etc. Um, but ultimately, the goal is to ensure that the game right here, you start the game with enough land speed to participate because we don't want people to get mana screwed from the very start. I think this is fine. It works, and it has worked for a while, so I like that. Uh, rule four. This is really interesting. I actually had to look this up myself as I, I had heard the rule before. And I kind of had a sense how it worked, but I was wondering what was changing here because it's not very clear what is changing from the announcement. Rule four, in short, is that if you take a permanent of some kind, let's say an Elvish Mystic, with your mono blue commander deck, you steal the Elvish Mystic to your side of the field, you tap it to add a green to your mana pool, then becomes colorless because your commander identity is only blue and the green being produced is impossible flavor wise at least and so it creates a colorless mana of course with Oath of the Gatewatch now we have colorless being it, it matters it really does matter being able to generate colorless through this method so they decided that at least for now until they see how it impacts the format they are going to remove this rule and so if you steal an elvish mystic with your mono blue deck it's going to tap for green not for colorless uh, the green can be put towards towards uh, uh, generic mana but not colorless mana makes sense i think so that's pretty much what i came away from it and i think that's fine uh it's gonna be less flavorful but at the same time i think it's going to um it's going to be helpful for the format Oath of the Gatewatch going forward and help players not get a aha, got you for newer players who are not as adept with these kind of rules. Last but not least, Prophet of Crufix is banned. We have the ban list. Hasn't had a lot of updates. Usually it gets one card a year or maybe two, uh, two a year at most added to the list. It tends to be very conservative. Prophet of Crufix was the newest edition. Why, you might add, because, hey, it's a multiplayer card, and it's not particularly broken, doesn't have insane synergies, but I think this is an example of, much like Sylvan Primordial, it's too much all the time to the point where decks, uh, people are driven to play certain style decks simply because of its existence. And it also is very, very difficult Everyone want. I mean, the way they describe it pretty much sums it up. Everyone wants to. Uh, everyone wants to take it, clone it, uh, run it, destroy it. The second hits play, it becomes the focal point of the entire game. It's very easy to protect it because your stuff, your mana, and your lands and creatures untap every turn. So it becomes very easy to counterspell prevent opponents from dealing with things, um, and it gives you such incredible advantage with the flash. It's like an all-in-one perfect creature. And we've heard this card for a while. It's been in discussion about being banned, uh, and for now, at least they're they're putting on the on the sidelines. I don't think it's a bad decision. Honestly, there were one or two cards I think that they continue to skip over that I would still add to the list. As I'm sure you've heard me speak about before. But Provident Crufix is not a bad example. This is a card that is like it's too much good stuff to be good for the community and uh, at least for now I think it's a fine decision so, so far for the announcements for January the commander ban list I I'm happy with all the announcements I think they're all well thought out uh, I kinda they said that they always look at the the official ban list and try to take stuff off at this point at least they said there's nothing they can take off to test uh, but at least they're thinking about it <laughs> wizards doesn't seem to be even thinking about it for modern uh, given that they just ban more cards and more deck archetypes without even considering a reasonable uh, unbanning. So good for you, committee, and I'm really glad of your decisions here in January. Looking forward to the next ones, usually in March, April time.
uh, they'll probably have some kind of update. What do you guys think of the announcements as Commander players? Are you guys excited? Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, then please tap the like button if you're new to the channel. Check in and subscribe. As always, Rocks the Box 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.